1. I currently work in a fine dining restaurant as a bartender. And to say the least, for the most part ever since I started to work here, I felt like a very obvious outcast from a majority of the other staff and most particularly the servers. To put it simply, it's come to a point where I dread working and only feel excited for my two days off and payday. Servers genuinely don't seem to like me and have clearly shown to like the other bartender way better that I trained and have shown that by giving him constant praise and have never given me any, besides literally all of once when a server told me that I did a good job. They have on numerous occasions made plans to hang out outside of work and mind you, we're talking about it at the bar top while I was closing and invited pretty much everyone besides me. They have done this pretty much almost every weekend. They even said to another co-worker, if you decide to go out, you know where we'll be. Even one of the managers was aware of the plans they had outside of work and they low-key jokingly invited him. One of the servers hosted two parties. I wasn't invited to either of them, but the host was. I actually only knew about his second party because the host told me about it. She didn't go, though. For the holidays, our GM decided to have a holiday party. I brought my best friend with me, and he was pretty much the only person I actually spent time with at the party. Everyone else, I had to initiate interaction with them, and they barely acknowledged both of us. On the other hand, when I go to my best friend's restaurant, if he tells people I'm here, everyone is very willing to come up and chat with me. Or if I tell them I'm waiting for him, they easily, willingly interact with me, and they all have told me on numerous occasions they want me to come work with them, even if it's our first encounter. I know as a fact that I would get the job as bartender at the restaurant he works, and one of the managers there has literally asked me when I'm going to start working there. I know his restaurant is definitely more hectic, but I know as a fact I'd be way happier there because his co-workers actually acknowledge me, and have even invited me out to their plans before. Mind you, it would also be way more convenient if we worked at the same place because I'm literally his way to and from work. So, it would not only save commute time, but it would also assure that neither of us are late. I'm thinking of just quitting on the spot at my current job. I already put in an application at the other place and plan to call them. On another occasion, I almost got the job, but it wasn't hired simply because of my availability. So I know if I have full open availability that they will hire me. And to put the cherry on top of it all, before we had a second bartender, when my GM would take care of the bar while I was on my breaks, he would keep all the tips that he made. And also thinks that he can tell me and the other bartender how to work our tip jar. What I mean by that is he micromanages us. Me and the other bartender agreed we would keep all our cash tips in a tip jar until the end of the shift. There's only an hour of the restaurant being open when the opener and closer aren't on shift together. So we made the decision that we'd place the money we make in that hour in the tip jar. And our GM gets angry if he sees tips in the jar from that extra hour, which isn't his business to begin with. There's a lot more I can say, but I think I've said enough. Hellfreezer's not will let me say a few things. Definitely quit on the spot. Unless you're planning to use these people as a reference and it doesn't sound like you are or need to, or if the law in your state permits it, quit. You don't need them. Move on. Go to somewhere better. You're going to be happier there, you'll be respected more there, and if it's a busier bar, you're going to do better on tips. Sounds like this is a win all the way around for you. 2. I went back to a restaurant I used to work for, because it's a Cajun place, and Mardi Gras gets busy at a time of year a lot of places are slow. The money was bad. Bad, bad. I mean getting paychecks bad, I held out. Fat Tuesday is coming. We get our tips onto pay cards daily. For some reason, I didn't get my tips from Saturday until 8am Central on Monday morning. What happens Monday at 8am? Pending transactions post. It was supposedly an error. Might have been. Suspicious regardless. Error or not. Not getting my money when I am told I'll have it is a violation of trust and about as big of a red flag as possible. Would they disclose to me if they were insolvent? Fuck no. I got some bull confusing runaround nonsense. Today was finally the big day though. Fat Tuesday. 
I ended up being a bar back on the busiest day of the year, $12 an hour and 1% tip out. We have brand new servers, like first serving job ever, who were doubles on the floor that would walk with four to five times what I do because of it. On top of that, most if not all of that would have gone towards taxis, so in a sense it felt like I was working this morning for free. The plan was to just tough it out and make money tonight. My bar manager decides he's just gonna stand there and micromanage the shit out of me. Jigger shots that literally have a fill line. Make the servers non-alcoholic drinks. I just stopped. Is this fucking clown show of a business worth this? I start a new job Thursday anyway. I decided it wasn't. So I left them without anyone to run their well on Fat Tuesday. A major drinking holiday, and aside from managers, very few people there know how to bartend at all. I really hope it doesn't screw a coworker too hard, because I doubt the managers are going to step up. They sure as shit aren't going to reflect on this or ponder changing their corporate culture. I'm just some disgruntled asshole. Obviously their business is perfect, and I just have unrealistic expectations. <laughs> I won't name names, but I imagine some of the people that work there will hear this. It's a shit restaurant, the constant promotions undercutting our individual sales, but maintaining their margins. Cheapest place I've worked, laziest motherfucking kitchen on the planet. Good riddance. I have a multiple reason to never rush back to that place. I hope they go out of business. 3. My first table of the night was a family. In our semi-fine dining establishment, for what I later found out was a birthday dinner. One lady orders a margarita. Halfway through apps tells me it's too cold. <laughs> and wants the drink strained. Okay, fine. She said she didn't want the salt still on the rim, so I go bother our only bartender to do so. Annoying, because I checked on them several times before appetizers, but not the end of the world. At some point, the grandfather of the family tells me two of the other adults have birthdays. Cool, I'll wish them a happy birthday. When I do so, right before Andre's, I'm told Margarita Lady now wants salt. Okay, fine. I'll go once again bother the bartender for you, your highness. Mind you, I'm never openly annoyed about this. I genuinely want people to enjoy themselves at my work, so I try to be as polite and friendly as I can. The time comes for the check, and Grandpa pushes the Margarita towards me and says the lady hated it. I apologize to her for the third time now, and all due to her own mistakes, and say I'll go talk to my boss, who's the owner, but I don't say that. She says don't comp it, it's Margarita Lady's fault. So I tell the table that, and the grandfather angrily tells me to bring the check. This is the first time he's shown any anger toward me. When he pays and they get up to leave, this man comes up to me, a small 21-year-old woman, gets in my face, grabs my shirt sleeve, and tells me that the price of the margarita came out of my tip, and that I was lucky I even got a tip, because I didn't do anything for the birthdays during dessert. 10% on $405, oof. I just nod and apologize, and go to the kitchen to have a panic attack. My bosses get pissed and the owner comes back out to tell me they've left, and she yelled at the man to never speak to her employees like that. Love her so much. I was genuinely afraid of him. For a second, I thought he was going to hurt me. Twenty minutes later, his daughter comes back and apologizes profusely, saying she was mortified and didn't know what her dad said to me, but to ignore him, and I was amazing, and then gave me a twenty. Thanks, but tell your dad he triggered my PTSD. Four. So, I didn't know that East Coast moms have a reputation for being horrible. So I was completely unprepared for what happened last night. It was overall a pretty slow night. I didn't have much to do. We had a lot of covers, but the majority were larger parties, so I ended up having like nine tables total. By the time most of the parties were coming in, about four to five within an hour, I had one table. So my manager gave me the largest one, an eight top. It ended up being about five frat guys and three moms. That's cool. I go up to them to give them my spiel, but before I can do that, they start telling me their drink orders. They all want a mid-shelf tequila with a mixer. 
So as I write down, I ask the frat guys for ID, since the moms are clearly old enough. I'll look about 45. Only one has ID. I tell them without ID, I can't serve them, and go to ring in the other drinks. Unfortunately, we only had enough of that specific tequila to make one drink, so I go back and ask if they'd like to choose another. And I told them the recommendations I got from the bar. They choose the bar recommendation, I go and grab their drinks, and the mom asks where her second drink is. I told her that I can legally only serve one at a time, and I'll bring the second when she's done. I grab appetizer orders by their request. Now, here's the thing. By this time, my only other table is checked out, and I got sat a six top next to my eight. I go over. Also, didn't get to do my spiel because they're so hungry they just start ordering. I grab the menus, and as I'm walking away, I notice that one of the frat bros without ID has his mom's drink in front of him. I go over and inform them that drink sharing isn't allowed, and put it back in front of the mom, so I could go grab my manager and figure out what to do. She's gone, so I go to an older server, and she told me to just be vigilant about making sure it doesn't happen again, and to take the drink if it happens again. Well, after being in back for a few minutes polishing silverware, I go to check on my tables. It's back in front of him. I reached over the table and said, I need this, and walked away. I return a few minutes later to pre-bus for their entrees, and the mom lays into me, saying that she is his mom and the adult, implying I wasn't one, and she's the customer, so I have to serve her and her son. I told her I would get my manager, because there was no way I was dealing with that level of crazy. My manager is finally back, and I find her by the server station. We were both looking for each other, because my co-workers let her know I needed her. We talk, and before I can fully explain what happened, the mom comes over and starts berating me to her. My manager was like, please don't talk to them like that. It escalates to her almost kicking them out, and is only prevented by their food being up. The mom admitted her son was underage too. Anyway, karma does wonders because one of the moms felt embarrassed and even though I autogratted them, I got an extra $55 tip from her which was about an 18% tip on the bill. Hellfreezer's note, this does not bring back pleasant memories. As you know, I was never a server but I did work in an off-license. Uh, just across from a pub for a decade and a half. And yeah... All the parents think the, the law doesn't apply to them and they're special little angels. They actually genuinely believe that I'm the customer means something. Well, no, you were a customer and you're about to get kicked out if you don't dial down. I got very strict with them over the years. Sometimes you just had to be firm with them. Sometimes I got bad enough you actually had to bar them. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I quite liked doing that. It was nice to see the expression on their faces. They suddenly realize, oh crap, they don't have any power here. Or what I loved to do when people would complain, I'd be like, oh, no problem, just wait here, I'll get your number for head office. That was always a good one for wiping the smiles off their faces. For as long as these butt weasels think they have any kind of power over you, they're going to wield it in any way they can. Make sure they think they don't. Because the customer is not always right, they are only right in matters of desire and taste. And some of their desires and tastes are just bloody stupid. 5. This happened a year ago, but clearly it did some damage because I'm still thinking about it. For reference, I was waitressing at a resort, averaging 57 hours a week. On this particular day, I was finishing up my third 11-hour shift in a row. I'm pretty tired, and it's taking a bit more effort to stay attentive. My notebook filled up, no space was left, so I started writing orders on a spare piece of paper. Table of three has a reservation for 9pm, our last seating. They don't show up until two of them arrive at 9.36. They are hotel guests. Our manager does everything to make guests happy, so we seat them anyway. I'm thinking, okay, maybe I can get them in and out of here quickly. But no, they won't be ordering any food till their friend arrives. Two rounds of drinks later, woman finally arrives and joins them. They order everything. Appetizers, soups and salads, entrees. I get them their starters. It's time to ring in their entrees. I open my booklet. 
The spare paper with their orders is gone, nowhere to be found. For the life of me, I cannot remember the man's order. It's going on hour 33 in 72 hours. My brain is slow. I'm doing laps, trying to track it, but to no avail. Fuck. I swallow my pride. I have no choice but to ask him to remind me of his order. I approach the man at the table. Sir, I'm so sorry to interrupt your dinner. It's the end of a long week and I seem to have misplaced your order. Would you be so kind as to remind me what you had? I know she had prime rib and her the linguine. The man looks me in the eye, scoffs and says, Get me a drink and I'll tell you. As in, give me free liquor and I'll humor you. I go and get him that drink, knowing damn well it's gonna show up on the bill. He says nothing, ignores me. So I have to ask again. The man says to me, Wow, you know, I would be so embarrassed if I were you, making your customers do all the work. I am stunned. He has to tell me one fucking word and flat out refuses. No way in hell am I only bringing out two entrees. So I get my manager. He pitches to my manager, saying he expects more from such a nice restaurant. At this point, other tables are starting to notice. My manager, God bless him, it's fantastic at telling people to go screw themselves while maintaining an air of complete professionalism. Another table apologizes to me on behalf of this man, having witnessed everything. I'm sorry you have to deal with people like that. Yeah, me too. These fuckers are the last table, remained in the empty dining room for another hour. Definitely my worst waitressing experience. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Spinning Plates, episode 240. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Before you go, like the poke button, or something like that. I think that makes sense. Those words are English, it'll do. And if you'd like to get early access to these videos, don't worry, John's got you. You can do that by clicking on the link in the description. That'll take you to my Patreon page. Unless you click the one that takes you to the merchandise store, in which case, that'll take you to the merchandise store. Because that, that's how links work. I'm, I'm smart, so I know these things. I've been on the internet for a while. Those of you who are new, don't be embarrassed if you didn't know that. And you can select as uh, little as a dollar a month on my Patreon page to support if you wish to. Uh, you don't have to, you can just watch the videos here, wait for them to come out. But if you support me there, you get them on the Monday. Or a Tuesday. It's usually Monday. I always say Tuesday to give myself a bit of a buffer, but generally you get them on the Monday. And, as I mentioned, you'll also find a link to the Hellfreezer merchandise store on Teespring. And if you especially enjoy today's video, and you insist on it, mm, all right, you can leave a tip. You do that by clicking on the heart with a dollar sign in the middle. No, no, don't. <laughs> don't. Not really go on. No, don't. Stop, stop. You don't have to do that. Hit the button. No, it's fine. It's fine. But all joking aside, you never have to do that. And if you're ever made to feel like you're doing that by a YouTube channel, honestly, I'd walk away if I were you. That's not how we do things here in Channel Health Freezer. Tips are appreciated. They're welcome, but they're not required. The videos are there for you regardless. Okay. Now, I don't think I have any other business today, so let's move right along to Hellfreezer's question of the day. And today's question is... Okay, borrowing this from Threads, I saw it during the rounds. Who is your favourite character from space that isn't in Star Wars or Star Trek? Well, mine's pretty easy. It's the Doctor from Doctor Who. Comes in many varieties, they're all pretty tasty. So to speak. Actually, some of them are very tasty. Nom nom nom. I think the very first Doctor I saw it might have been Sylvester McCoy. At least that's the first one I remember seeing. Although not my favourite. I do like him. I think my favourite from the original run is probably Tom Baker. Then probably Matt Smith from the more modern era. Although I like them all. It's a rare thing that I like everybody who plays a version of a character. I think it probably helps that it's essentially the same person. Anyway, that's mine. Why don't you let me know what yours are in a comment below. And before we go, let's have the answer of the day from a previous video. And today's answer comes from a child of Eris. And this was in relation to your favourite bearded character. 
My favourite bearded fictional character is actually Dr. John Hammond from the Jurassic Park franchise. Spared no expense. He just comes across as a really passionate, well-intentioned man who just wanted to give the world a bit of wonder and joy through the recreation of dinosaurs, even if the project ended up horribly. I remember watching Jurassic Park as a kid and wishing Dr. Hammond could be my grandpa. He genuinely seemed wholesome. R.I.P. Richard Attenborough. I agree. Uh, not my favourite, but I do like him. And John Hammond definitely seems much nicer in the films than he does in the book. Uh, in the book, he's more he's more in it for the money and the glory than anything else. Uh, not so much of a philanthropist. Thank you very much for your answer, a child of Eris. And with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.